How to dress for an interview. Seems like a simple question, yet it's one of the most common ones I get here at Real Men Real Style, and I know for a lot of guys it's confusing. But if you understand that an interview is just a particular type of meeting, and that there are in general five types of meetings, and that there are rules for dressing for each, it becomes pretty simple. That is the goal of today's video, to make dressing for an interview or any other type of meeting simple. The first type of meeting is the sell meeting, and this is when you're trying to persuade somebody else that you are worth their time, you are worth their effort, you are worth their money. So, let's say you've got a business and you're trying to sell your service or your product. That is a sell meeting whenever you're out there and you're trying to create sales. That one's pretty obvious. But an interview is also a sales meeting because you're trying to sell a company your services, your time in exchange for money. A first date is a sell meeting. You're trying to convince this person that you are worth a second date. Understand that we are oftentimes in sell meetings and we don't even realize it. And there is a way that you can dress in a sales meeting, and I'm going to use the interview as the example, so that basically you can ensure it starts out on the right foot. Rule number one in dressing for a selling interview, dress as sharp as the situation will allow. I'm going to use the interview as the example here. So, you want to call ahead. You want to find out how do people normally dress for interviews at this company? And understand, every single company has a dress code. It's got a culture. It's got a true, the way the tribe dresses. Even if they say they don't have a dress code, they do because people aren't showing up naked. They're not showing up dressed like clowns. There is a dress code. Many companies understand that this is something of confusion and they'll try to give you a range of clothing you can dress up. I would say always try to dress to the highest level you can. What you want to do is show up to impress, not show up underdressed. That is going to be a big negative. The second rule that you want to pay attention to is going to be to mirror those at the company. Like I said, if you're applying at Facebook, you're applying at Google, or you're applying at IBM, two very different cultures. High-level consulting firms, banking firms, maybe out in New York, they've got a different culture, a different dress code than a Silicon Valley company or maybe an energy company down in Houston, Texas. You want to pay attention to that. Know those things. Rule number three, pay attention to the small details because you can bet the person interviewing you is paying attention to those tiny small details because they realize they're not tiny. They do matter. So, make sure that you've got a nice portfolio to keep a copy of your resume, keep a zip drive in there so you can have electronic copies if needed. Make sure you've got a writing pad with a nice pen so you can go in there and write notes if necessary. Wear a watch. Now, I know you can check your phone for the time. The thing is you want to be more discreet and if you've got one of those interviews or you're doing group interviews with multiple people, you want to make sure that you're not talking too long, that things are moving along if there's going to be a time frame. Now, speaking about time and a relationship with time, I do think you should have a nice watch. I realize though a lot of you guys are constrained. You don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to go spend on a watch. So, in that case, I want you to go check out Vincero. Vincero, let me pull up their website really quick. I've talked about this company before. What I love about Vincero, they make beautiful, amazing, just great looking watches that look 10 times more expensive than what they cost. So, at a great, at a fair price, you can get a watch that you're going to, people are going to compliment you on. It's going to help you stand apart from the pack. It is just going to really look great on your wrist. Now, when you go through there, you look at all their bold designs. I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. What is your favorite design? What is your favorite look? What is your favorite watch down there? Be detailed because you guys know if I've got extra, I want to send it your way. Gentlemen, I've had Vincero as a paid sponsor for now almost two years and I love them. They're a great company, great watches. I'm proud to support them and I hope you go check them out. I'm going to link to them down in the description. Go use that discount code, go grab one of their watches and show up to your interview prepared. The next type of meeting I'm going to talk about is a buying meeting. This is when you're out there buying something. So, you're buying an investment property, you're buying a car, you're out there spending money. And in many cases, you're in a better position of power than when you're trying to sell. Now, this can be flipped if you're buying from somebody that has a scarce number of what's available. Oftentimes, the positions can be reversed. But in general, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a great deal. Now, there are multiple ways to approach this. 
I'm a big fan of going in with a high power position. So, this is where you look to outdress and to dress better than those that you're going to be doing business with. This goes back to a study I've talked about before, the suits versus the sweats. Again and again, what they saw is when people negotiated, one group's wearing suits, one group's wearing sweats, the one that wore suits always got on average 10% more. And so, if you're going in there and you're negotiating with a car, you're going to be looking to buy an investment property. It may be something that you want to outdress your competition, that you want to send the signal, I'm in a position of power and I'm going to get the best deal. You may want to consider some other modes as well. One of them is actually to create a bit of a bond. And this one you do by using little clues, little bits of pieces that in a sense connect you with somebody. So, do you, have you ever been traveling? Maybe you've been in Europe and you run into somebody from Canada. I'm from Canada. All of a sudden, you're hanging out with this person, spending three weeks traveling Europe with this other Canadian, and you realize back in Canada, we would not have hung out at all. We're just very different. But in Europe, we have this similarity, this thing that brings us together. Understand that's a very powerful feeling, and you can do that with a small pin on your jacket. Simply by being a well-dressed man, having nice dress shoes, having a certain type of pen, a certain type of watch, all of these things can connect people to each other. At the end of the day, what you're looking for is a deeper connection that can help you get a better deal. People, especially not well-trained negotiators or people that are just human beings, we are oftentimes nicer and friendlier with people we have that connection with. The last type of dressing I'm going to talk about is to dress in a low power position. There's a, um, I remember this one show I watched about a guy that was a doctor. He went into a car dealership and he's dressed like a homeless man. And he's almost got this deal going out the door, but then one of his kids reveals, you know, that their dad is a doctor or something like that. And so the, the salesman knows to knock the price up. Now, this doesn't always work, especially with trained salesmen. They realize, hey, we've got a, th this is the lowest offer I'm going to give anyone. But oftentimes in sales, they do have a range that they can give. So, if you put yourself in a lower position, one that you're kind of relying on their charity, and I'm not saying to do this to be deceptive, but it may be something you don't want to come off as overly flashy. So, which of these buying styles is right? Well, that depends on your negotiation style and your personality. You need to find the one that works for you. The third type of meeting is the support meeting. And when you're dressing for a support meeting, you simply want to show that you are in solidarity with the people there. This isn't about you standing apart. This isn't about you expressing yourself, having your own style. This is about you being part of a group and being there for those that you care about. We're talking about funerals, religious services. And I do feel that there's a little bit like at a regular church service. Yes, you can dress maybe a little bit better, bring in a little bit of color. If it's going to be a funeral, oftentimes darker colors, even if you don't own a suit. And I've been at funerals in which almost no one was wearing a suit, but everyone was showing respect. No one was there to stand out. Everyone there was wearing darker colors. Depends on what culture you're in as to the type of color. Here in the United States, mostly black. I wear black suits to a funeral. But again, it's just about support in this situation situation. Meeting type number four, the casual meeting. Now, this one is deceptively difficult because oftentimes that casual is with business casual. It's, we're talking golf outings with the boss. We're talking about after company meetings in which alcohol is going to be present. People are wanting to loose up, have a little bit more fun. At the same side, you've got to realize that, yes, you are still kind of on the clock because what happens here can and will affect what happens at work. Now, the first thing to understand here is that casual does not mean sloppy. This does not mean that you're going to wear clothing that just looks and fits poorly, yet you don't want to wear a suit, even if you wear possibly a suit every day in and at work. This is though where you would dress a level down, make sure the clothing fits you properly, and make sure it's proper. This is where a lot of men, their wardrobe falls flat because they don't have great fitting, great looking, casual wear made from high quality fabrics. This is where you want to expand your casual shirt wardrobe. You want to have nice dress slacks, chinos, dark colored jeans. You maybe want to have a few sports jackets which are made with livelier colors, not so much dark, maybe lighter colored. Pay attention to those small accessories and those details. This is where they're going to shine. They're going to enable you to look good at that golf outing because this isn't where you wear that polo that you, you know, found on sale and has a couple stains in it. No, because this is still a work outing. You may be golfing with a particular client who's going to pay attention to those small details. So, you want to make sure that if you do and you find yourself going to those situations that you build out the wardrobe. 
The fifth meeting type is going to be the formal meeting type. This is going to be for specific events. We're talking about weddings. We're talking about quinceaneros. We're talking about prom. We're talking about Marine Corps birthday balls. Now, what all of these have in common is they do have a strict dress code. You want to follow that dress code. The reason being is it's all about ambiance. It's all about how the clothing we wear puts us in a particular type of mood and it sets up an overall feeling for the event. Now, if it's a casual wedding, well, don't overdress. It's almost like a support meeting, but it doesn't have, you know, the somber, you know, tones of the support meeting because you can be more colorful here. You have oftentimes have a lot more options. If it's casual and you want to wear your suit, gosh, well, maybe you can wear your seersucker or maybe you can actually pull out that vest, go for that bow tie, whatever it may be. At this point, you want to pay attention to the dress codes. That also means you may need to go out there and get clothing that you don't have. So, if a suit is required, if a you know, a tuxedo, you're going to probably need to go out there and rent it or go buy it. Now, I know I just said rent. I mean, you guys, Antonio, can't believe you said rent formal clothing. Well, sometimes if you need it quickly or if you're only going to wear it one time, you can still find some pretty good options. I do think a dark colored suit is just going to, it's something every man should have because it's going to fit in so many situations. But remember, these formal meetings, it's about following the rules, it's about helping set up the overall feeling and about making the people who this is for, basically making it special for them. All right, gents, now it's your turn. What tips would you give somebody going into an interview on how to dress? I want to hear from you down below in the comments and go check out Vincero. I've talked about him before. I've loved him over the last couple of years. These guys have been a great paid sponsor and I'm proud to support them. And if I've got some extras, which I think I do, I would love to send them your way. All you have to do is go down into the comments. Let me know specifically the style and make and what you love about it. And if I've got a couple extras, I will try to send them out. We've been sending out quite a few over the last few months. And gentlemen, I really appreciate you. I appreciate you being part of my audience. Appreciate you help spread the message, what we're doing here at Real Men Real Style, helping men use style to get what they want out of life. So, uh, if you want to like, if you want to share, if you want to pass on this video to others, I appreciate that. Take care, gentlemen. See you in the next video. Bye.